Rolf de Heer, like Michael Winterbottom, never seems to repeat himself. After Ten Canoes, he has turned to a silent comedy about a time-travelling scientist. In 1907, Dr. Plonk, Nigel Lungi, a celebrated scientist and inventor, spends his time in his laboratory with his deaf-mute assistant, Paulus, Paul Blackwell, and is sometimes distracted by Mrs. Plonk, Magda Subansky, and the energetic woofer, Tiberius, played by Reg the Dog. Plonk makes the startling discovery that the world will end in 101 years, but the authorities refuse to believe him, so he invents a time machine to travel into the future. Being a great lover of silent cinema, I must confess I was alarmed when I heard about this concept because most contemporary filmmakers don't know a lot about silent films and get them wrong. But to his credit, De Heer has succeeded in making a film which genuinely evokes the early silent period. Using a standard ratio, a hand-cranked camera and black and white, and employing gifted actors who evoke the heyday of Chaplin and the Senate comedians, though they came a few years later than 1907 when Dr. Plonk is nominally set, De Heer and his talented team fondly return us to another era of cinema. The only drawback to this beautifully made and very charming film is that it overstays its welcome. Silent comedies rarely, if ever, ran for an hour and a half, and a shorter running time would have made for a better film. Still, this ambitious and frequently very funny tribute to silent film is a considerable achievement, and Reg the Dog is a great discovery. Margaret. Isn't he a hero? Isn't he terrific? I, I think we should institute <laughs> Aki Karazmaki's idea for a canine door prize at the AFI Awards. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think Reg would win it. It's he actually would. Paul Blackwell's dog. Yeah. You know, I was incorporated into the, the into the thing because he's got this ball uh, fetish. Yeah, he's, he, he has he has a lot of fun. But so do we watching the film, don't we? Yes, and I mean, I think that the, you know where it succeeds is in the business. Yes, you know, in the slapstick. Yeah, yeah. and that's you know very much silent film. Yeah. Thing and I think it's Keystone. It's, yeah. it's Keystone era. It's I mean, a sort of uh, kicking when people. When it's overloaded home. with plot, yeah, there's a little bit too much plot, maybe. Yeah, but, but didn't you like Mike Rann as the as the Prime Minister yeah. of the future? <laughs> <laughs> no, what a good sport he is. Yeah. <laughs> no, I felt. I, and look, I think this is really charming. I think Paul Blackwell is wonderful as Paul. I think they're all very and good. And Magda's great yeah, too. I think they're all very good. So no, I I think that you know Rolf is a filmmaker that goes where no one else in the world. You've you know, got a hand to him, haven't you? He, yeah. He, He's sort of prodigious with his ideas. He's constantly and, reinventing himself yeah. and cinema. We should say a word about the music too. Graham Titus' music score is very yes, nice as well. It's yeah. lovely. Yeah. I'm giving this four stars. I'm giving it three and a half. There was a particular moment when I was casting around for something to do and not being able to work it out and, and I, you know, went, opened the fridge in the uh, storeroom at the office and discovered something I'd forgotten we had, uh, which was 20,000 feet of, of old uh, raw stock, expired, uh, way past its used by date. And in that moment I saw it up on screen with all its imperfections that it was likely to have and could only see it as a silent film because all those imperfections then become part of the texture of the film. And I thought, yep, I know what we're doing next. It, it, totally wacky idea, but that was what I thought. I thought, what a great idea when someone says, you know, Rolf wants you to be in a black and white silent comedy set in 1907 film with a, a film with a hand crank camera. And I thought, look, it, it'll either be fantastic or it'll die in the arse. <laughs> The 
the dog was, we're terrifically lucky with the dog. Um, the dog is a Jack Russell Terrier, um, belongs to Paul Blackwell, who plays Paulus. And I'd heard about this dog from Nigel, who plays Dr. Plonk, who visited Paul and came back with these extraordinary stories about this dog, this mad dog. So I thought, OK, well, let's use that. And I asked Paul, and yeah, yeah, OK, we'll use the dog. And I said, well, let's, you know, so I began to factor it into the script much more. And in general, like in the studio, for example, the, the dog was simply on set every day and we could try things with it and so on. But we had some training done of Paul so that Paul could learn how to control the dogs. Prior to that, it was completely uncontrollable. And Paul learnt very easily how to control the dog. And so it became a mad, still mad, but controllable dog. And I think the Blackwell family has been happier ever since, because now they've got this crazy dog, but it's controllable. We'd all get together and work out how we were going to block a scene, but also what would happen, because the script was very loose. It was notional more than anything, and and often there'd be bits saying, something funny happens here, don't know what yet, you know, and, and we knew that we'd all have to devise what was going to happen, and that's what we'd do. Was that... Um, do you like working like that? I love working like that. It's great, because a lot of comedy really is of the moment you know you when you're there and in the physical environment then well I find for me anyway that's when the ideas start to happen so to have it sort of loose like that rather than you know everything's set and you can't move and you've got to do this and you've got to hit your mark and you know because we had like no lighting no sound you could roam around so it actually was quite freeing. Rolf you actually do like going where no one's gone before don't you? Um, it, it's it's not that sort of conscious thought, OK? What I like is something different each time and something that, that is challenging, something that has different problems involved with it, that is an exploration into somewhere where I haven't been. Because then I can be passionate about it and, and, and find it really interesting to do. And this you know, happens on different levels, like, you know, with, with Ten Canoes, for example, you know, it was working with the mob uh, in, in that terribly difficult place um, that was so interesting. Um, now, with, with, with uh, Dr Plonk, <clears throat> it was more a sort of a technical challenge uh, and a, a challenge of doing something that I hadn't done before, which is working with actors in that way to, to create that sort of comedy, um, but then to, to have it feeling authentic to the old silent films of, of the past that, are, that, I, that I love. That was Rolf Tahir and Magda Zabanski talking about Dr Plonk, which opens nationally tomorrow.